In this series of videos, we will explore the essential components of Colorado's Multi-Tiered System of Supports, or MTSS. A well-designed, multi-tiered system of supports builds the collective capacity of a system, and it enables the implementation of key legislative priorities and local and state initiatives. When MTSS is implemented effectively, a responsive learning culture benefits every stakeholder, every student, every family, every staff member, and every community partner. In this segment, we'll look at evidence-based practices, which is defined as approaches to instruction, intervention, and assessment that have been proven effective through research indicating improved outcomes for students. The field is driven by a very important concept, which is making sure you use evidence-based practices. Um, and there's lots of evidence-based practices out there that we can use as a resource, and you can probably fill the library with those. You can probably fill the counselor's office on the shelf with a whole bunch of evidence-based practices, and all of them are going to be reasonable things to consider. However, one thing we've learned about within the context or the framework of multi-tiered system support is that for us to have the biggest impact, what we really have to be thinking about is what's the smallest number of evidence-based practices we can put in place that have the biggest effect. The practices are used to align with the outcomes. Practices are used to make sure that the adults know what they're implementing. It's, it's important to focus on evidence-based practice because um, we, we need to find the best interventions that will have the most effect for students. Um, what we're finding is without the emphasis on evidence-based practices, people may use opinion, uh, they may spend time uh, doing things that may not be as effective as we hoped. Um, we, we also find it interesting that sometimes uh, people say, well, it doesn't hurt just to use practices that are not evidence-based, but we say it, it does because uh, the problem is you're taking time away from doing other things that may be more effective. That's important to think about because in the old days when I, for example, didn't know any better, we would just push the practice a circle. We'd say, do this, do this, do this. Not paying attention to whether or not it really aligns with the outcomes that are important to the school. Not really paying attention to the data that are used to define whether or not the practices are important. Or not checking to see if the adults are implementing with fidelity, which is the data part as well. Evidence-based practices are important because um, we want to get student outcomes. And we're much more likely to get student outcomes if we're doing things that work uh, for students. I think the other reason that evidence-based practices are important is it is a lot of work to implement, to change practice, to change instructional practices, to change behavioral interventions. If we're going to go to all that trouble to make a change, let's make it worth it for students. Interventions are defined as being evidence-based and we try to select those that maximize the likelihood that it's going to work with a kid. But it's also important to know whether or not we can really do this in real school and real classroom environments. And that's about efficiency. Can we really take advantage of local resources, the skills and strengths of the staff who are implementing? So MTSS really pays attention to whether or not the interventions really make a fit the environments in which they're going to be used, classroom, hallway, school as a whole. And when we do that, we do two important parts. One is what we call universal screening which is to check on a regular basis, quarterly, semi-annually, at the end of the year, to see how things are going. We also do something called progress monitoring. And progress monitoring has a really important function, which is, can we tweak what we're doing to make it more efficient, use our resources better? Also, can we do a fewer amount of things to have the same effect? And that's important because we have to also think about adding on new interventions as new problems c occur. So you can't continually say, well, we're just going to add on more. We've got to actually say, how are we going to be more efficient with what we're doing now? Because we're always going to have to look at other activities to, to, to direct our resources to. Uh, we, we look at evidence-based practices as not being all equal. Um, the reason being is we need to consider the, um, the uh, population that the evidence-based practice is uh, directed towards. Well, we need to consider the context where the evidence-based practice is um, uh, being provided. Um, another issue that we're, we're looking at is that some evidence-based evidence -based practices uh, really focus on, uh, on, on a specific skill set. So, for example, there are some very good evidence-based practices for building fluency in reading, but if the student has a, a problem with decoding or word attack skills, um, developing fluency in reading will not be sufficient to, to meet the needs of the student.
How do you get there? How do you pick the, the smallest number of interventions to have the biggest effect? Well, the problem-solving model is intended to do that. And the way you do that is you say, what data do we have that defines the problem? And then we say, what intervention has the best promise for achieving that outcome based on those data? What is the intervention that will deliver the best outcome that matches that, the, that data that we're concerned about? So if we have a school where bullying behavior is a big concern, and bullying is teasing on the bus, we want to make sure that the, the problem-solving team or the leadership team or whatever uses that information to pick the best bully intervention, that bully, bully prevention intervention, that will, that will affect bullying on the bus, teasing and harassment. Because most of the time we just pick large comprehensive interventions, which are, may, they might be evidence-based, but they may not address that specific concern. That's just an example. I mean, you could generate that around social skills for different problem solving, for self-management. You could talk about it for reading comprehension or decoding. You can do the same kind of logic. We want to pick interventions that align with our, what the data suggests are most important. They try to identify what are the factors that contribute to the problem or might contribute to a future problem. They then take the, that information to say, what's the best intervention that aligns with trying to solve that, in, that problem? And then they try to predict how likely that intervention is going to work or not. Then they take the intervention back and say, let's make sure our staff are prepared to implement that intervention for fidelity. Because just because you select the intervention doesn't mean that it's going to work. You want to make sure that it's contextualized to the place it's going to be applied. And then we make sure that the team that's in place that monitors that makes tweaks to the intervention so we maximize the impact of the intervention. Because we always want to make sure that we adjust the intervention based on how the kids are responding and how well the staff are implementing. So the quick way to think about it is we use data to, to define the problem, we use that information to pick the intervention, we make sure the staff are prepared to implement the intervention with fidelity, we monitor implementation on a regular basis to make sure it's working at the kid level and also at the staff level, and we tweak on a regular basis to make sure we're being efficient in the implementation. And that's pretty common across the academic side or the behavior side because we want to make sure we're making good decisions around the interventions. We really have to think about the usability of evidence-based practices. One, we know they're not going to jump off of a journal page and into a classroom. And there are some core features of practices that are usable. It means that they've been well specified enough that teachers know what they should be saying and doing to have an impact, that there are some measures of fidelity or performance assessment are we doing what we said we would do, that we're clear about for whom does it work. So we're not uh, looking for evidence-based practices that work well for um, junior high math and saying, oh, let's just use those in first and second grade. We're saying, for whom do they work? Do teachers know what to say and do? Do we have a measure of fidelity? And do we know how to put the supports in place to actually help teachers do what they want to do? You can have the best interventions on the shelf, you can make the best decisions based on your data, you got to make sure that we're implementing with fidelity. If the interventions are not implemented with fidelity, we're going to lose our ability to make sure kids benefit. You can have the best evidence-based practice and do it poorly and the kids will not benefit. We've got to formalize our attention to implementation of fidelity. We've got to concentrate on how well we're implementing. Now that fidelity question is an important one in another way that we talked about uh, uh, within the context of multi-tiered systems, and that is paying attention to culture. So you can have the best evidence-based practice, but if the language that's used to implement that practice isn't something that is meaningful to the culture in which it's being applied, and that means teacher culture, kid culture, family culture, the intervention is going to lose its effect on the kids' side. So to reiterate, it's about making sure we keep kids as our primary kind of focus for making decisions at all levels within the framework. And then second of all, making sure that any decisions we make about interventions for kids or staff or ourselves, we implement those with fidelity and that we really pay attention to the importance of accuracy of implementation to maximize those benefits.